Did you know that there was once a metagame where Venusaur was in in you? And not only that, did you know that in this metagame there was a tournament battle that happened where someone brought a Beedrill specifically to help duel Venusaur? Today we're going to cover a several years old tournament game between Dodman and Gefährlich Random, going by the name Calendar in this game, where we are going to watch Beedrill absolutely stun over one of the most broken Pokemon to ever drop <laughs> to Sun and Moon in you. If you enjoy this kind of tournament coverage, where we look at some very, very funny games, make sure a little, little subscribe. Join as a member if you want to support me extra. And so once we hit 10 members, I will do a very fun video with LC Mons and Inu. So if that interests you, hey, join us a member. And you get some extra content too, so it's very cool. Now, if you look at these teams, one thing I would note immediately is, of course, Kalna's team's a little bit weak to the Sigilith. It is, you know, Life Orb, Roost, Magic Guard. And when you don't have a Steel type or a Pursuit Trapper, it can be kind of tough to deal with the spawn. Not that Steel types are the greatest switch in any way. The Mon has coverage for them all. It's more that, in spite of that, you still can switch into your Air Slashes, your E-Balls, your Psy Shocks, your Roosts, get in on those turns, and Heat Wave isn't one shot in them. And then, of course, at this point in the metagame, Aerodactyl still wasn't in the tier, so that's why you're not seeing, you know, any Aerodactyl usage whatsoever. But Sneasel was. And Sneasel at this time was actually considered pretty broken. So, do with that info as you will. Now looking at the teams more thoroughly, I would also say this Rotom lead is very obvious because there's not a single Mon on this team that wants to deal with Rotom lead. None of them. Sigilith is like, it just doesn't want to take the chip. Yeah, you're not dying to a Volt Switch, and you can tell pretty obviously this is a more utility-based Rotom. You got the Scarf Pass here, there's just not much to gain from running a more offensive set. And there's no Volt Switch blocker of any kind, so you don't even have like, say, a Steelix that can at least pivot in on Volt and then maybe double to a different Mon as it goes for, you know, Hex or Will-O-Wisp or what have you. So, as we get into this game, we do see the Rotom lead very, very easily, and the Passimian leads from Dodman. And because what we talked about, this is probably Utility Rotom, ergo, it's probably Cold Berry. So, we're going to see Dodman just U-turn, because there's no use trying to go for knockoff and then getting burned or something, or even taking the Volt damage. You want to make sure that you do not get your Passimian in range of this Lycan Rock. Because although you've got plenty of rock resist on this team, hey, if you like it, rock finds a way still with that choice banded stone etched cleanly. So Passimian comes out, and this is a very obvious switch to do from Dodman, so we're gonna see Mr. Kellen predict that. You turn out as the Slowbro comes in and get the Slow King. You're gonna see the Slow King put in some overtime this game. I mean, it does everything it can to set up for the B Trail late game. So he's gonna hit him with the Brap Zap Cannon, do a whole bunch of damage. A whole bunch of damage 27. <laughs> it's not actually that much. It's Again, it's... Hey, you're pressuring this. So now the Beedrill comes out. And you're going to see why this mod's actually pretty decent this game. Because what actually checks Beedrill? Like, defensively, where's the answer? I was going to tell you right now, it's not the Sand Slash. It definitely is not the Slow, bro. It's not the Venusaur. <laughs> Obviously, he doesn't think it's a Scrafty after seeing Knockoff only do 39. <laughs> so this goes for Sword Stance. And Dodman being the astute battler he is, he does scout... Knowing this mod gets a roll run, and the Passimian takes this plus two tectonic rage. Now he does take it like a champ, but then, you know, he's forced to U turn. This gets a roost. And we do see the U turn from Kalanar here. I think it's good play because you obviously revealed you have a ground move. You don't want Sigil if just coming in for free. You U turn on that. You know, it's taking probably like 90%. But we see the U turn, and it's not like a lowland slash. This game is some offensive threat worth caring about. Very obviously a more defensive set. And so the Rotom will come out, defog away the rocks, and threaten a Willow Wisp burn here. And that's exactly what happens. Willow Sphere, it gets toxic, so you know this is like the ultimate utility. This could be like rapid spin even last. Because the team is pretty weak to spikes. You only have one mon that doesn't care about them, and then you don't really like, you know, your it ends up being revealed later. Celebrate Venusaur taking all that Spikes chip you don't like as well. Scrafty and Slowbro being forced to take that. Because these are mods that can give up momentum pretty easily. And being forced to recovery spam is kind of lame. So, Dox comes out from the Slasher. Rotom will now Volt Switch here because this mod is not threatening anything. Pylosswine will come out now. Because, hey, I can, you know, force them out and get rocks up. Yeah, well, one of these things is true. You can indeed get your rocks up. You're not forcing them out, though. And now the EQ is coming out, though. 
because Sigilyph doesn't want to come out, because Ice Shard follow-up's pretty free. You're not one-shotting this either. But Energy Ball, I believe, does a ton. But it's not a one-shot. It's very close. Maybe with the Toxic Chip, it would have been in range. I don't remember the calc specifically. But anyhow, Slowbro comes into the EQ. It takes a lot. The Slow King comes back out now, of course, because it's Salt Vest, so it always checks this. And here, he does make a good play in going for Dragon Tail. Unfortunately, misses. So he sources to switch out here, because not taking that knockoff trade. The Sim comes in, eats the knockoff. The Scarf isn't actually all that needed this game anyway, because you're not revenge killing this Venusaur at plus one. Maybe you did, you just not resist all your moves, it's too bulky. It's nice for Sigilyph. That's really the one thing it hurts. You also can't speed tie it with their Pissimian, but I don't think Kellner viewed that as too important, especially because Pissimian, I mean, it gets KO'd by a slight gust of wind at this point anyway. Silicon comes back out now once again. This time we'll actually see the Dragon Tail connect. So it's just very nice to keep getting chip damage on this Scrafty as you try to set up potentially for Lycanroc late game, but just Stone Edge. And with Sandslash being brought back in, you know who's coming out? Yeah, he's back. <laughs> Every time. This Bond King just get back in, look for a roost, get it, all of its health back. And now the Sigilyph's out. And we're about to see the spawn, why it's so scary for this team. Because, look at this. You know, with the rocks up, yeah, it took 50. So, yeah, not exactly the nicest thing. Thankfully, Kelder is very good at the game. <laughs> this one of people's spawn puts in overtime, absolutely blasts the Sigilyph with the Zap Cannon. And I'm here to tell y'all right now, this is the beginning of the end. That Sigilyph was the one mod that was not only faster than Beedrill, but could actually threaten it. I won't... I won't spoil anything. Let's keep going. Simeon comes out versus Scrafty. You know this monk could bulk up. You're also not choice locked, so you don't care if you CC. And, you know, Slowbro or Venusaur comes out. You can always U-turn on the Slowbro the next turn. And, I mean, if Venusaur comes out, if he just took, like, what? Over 50 in one turn, probably? So it's an okay trade. And we see the CC easily KO the Scrafty here. Now, you'll see at the very end of the game, Dodman apparently was not paying attention to the Calc when he ran it. The Cowcat Choppleberry is the item, he didn't change it to lefties. So, unfortunate for him there. Venusaur not comes out, this is where we're going to see it. So, a little bit of history real quick. In this gen, Venusaur had like a million different sets it could run in. You, you had Scarf, you had Specs, you had Z-Celebrate, you had Life Orb even. This, this mon was incredible. <laughs> this game, as I've alluded to, this was a Z-Celebrate set. And yeah, this is not breaking Beedrill. He's not, he does not have Hidden Power Fire. He's Synthesis. And so even with this crit here, Vigil yums it up, tanks the follow-up one, and he's just going to roost all of this damage back. You are going to watch Donvin try his damn best to break past the little Vigil. It's not happening. It's just not happening. And with Sigil lift down... There's nothing faster than Beedrill that actually revenge kills it. Simeon, Simeon doesn't have Rock Slide. What do you think this is? You think this is someone running the tech for Golbat? No. No. This is this is Beedrill's war. We just live it in it, baby. And I don't know. Synthesis must have been a misclick. It didn't matter anyway. This Beedrill was always going to stall it out. Even with Drill Run only doing a bit over half, it does not matter. Because what's this one going to do? Synthesis a ton and eventually just get KO'd by Drill Run? Yeah. And that's the story of how one German man put a player into retirement <laughs> with a Beedrill. I hope y'all enjoyed this game. Shoutouts Beedrill. Really one of the Pokemon of all time. I will see you next time. Peace.